build up for the TT this year was uh, pretty much like most years, to be quite honest. Um, almost back to normal, weren't we, with, uh, with the way the world is. Um, BSB is obviously a massive part of my career and racing. And there's always normally two or three rounds before we get to head down Glen Crutchery Road. And we had that this year. I had, so I had three, three rounds of BSB. Uh, and we squeezed in the Northwest like we normally do as well, although the Northwest definitely did not go to plan by any means. Uh, however, everywhere I went, I was pretty fast, I felt comfortable. The bike was working really, really well. The FHO racing team has been working really, really well. So heading into TT, I was, yeah, felt really prepared, felt comfortable and happy with what was about to happen. Practice week was a little bit unusual. We actually had a few issues to start with, to start the week. Um, so up until the Wednesday, I think it was, I'd not really done a proper lap on the Superbike because we were having a few issues here and there and we were changing all sorts of things that I don't need to go into. But yeah, some technical issues, some things I wasn't happy with or not comfortable with that I didn't like. We turned it back into a BSB bike. I was meant to be using the full uh, electronics package that BMW offer. Um, which is basically a World Superbike Electronics package with all the gizmos. Um, we ended up just going back to what I know, putting the Motec system on, no rider aids, no traction control, or yeah, no gizmos. So just, just me and my right hand. The best way of probably describing what I'm like on a race day um, is the sidecar race normally wakes me up which is at like quarter to 11 in the morning. So I'm not much of a, I'm not a morning person anyway, but I'm just really chilled out. It's not, um, I'm not a nervous person. I've never been nervous. I'm not a worrier. I don't worry about anything. Uh, life in general, never mind racing. I just kind of take things as they come. Um, I didn't do anything special that morning. There was nothing different to what I'd normally do, which is literally get up late, <laughs> have the team, take the piss out of me for getting up late, um, for laughing and joking on the start line before we go. I don't really have a routine as such, but I always get ready in the same way. I don't really know why. So it's always kind of right leg into my leathers and then left leg, then right boot, left boot, right arm, left arm, pretty much as I put my leathers on. Don't really know why. It wouldn't make any difference if I did it any other way, but it's just the way I've always got ready. Um, I'm not superstitious in any way, shape or form. If I did it all backwards, it won't make any difference to me really, but that's just the way I've always done it. So um, apart from that, yeah, nothing, nothing else really. We just get a little bit of food in me before we go. I knew the bike was already good. We'd ridden it, you know, in the first race, we'd, we'd won by a big margin, which was nice. It doesn't happen very often when you can win like that. So we already had, I guess, the kind of the leg up on everyone else, like mentally at least, to kind of know that we were in a good position. I knew I was in a good position. You're almost one step ahead before you start, which is always a nice place to be in. The bike was the same as it was in the in the superbike race. Um, the only difference was new new motor, um, which we'd done done a practice lap on. We were happy with where we were with it. I was confident with what lap speeds I could do if I needed to do them. It really just depended on where everyone else was at to see uh, to see where we or what we needed to do. Start line uh, for me, I'm always thinking about engine temperature, um, fuel consumption. So I don't normally start the bike until probably 20 seconds. So the bike's already been warmed up on the start line before the warmers have been taken off or anything like that. Once we hear the first couple of bikes set off, I know I'm I'm start number 10, so I'm. You know, 100 seconds down the line, so we'll wait for the first couple of bikes to set off. Once we hear them going down Glen Crutchery Road, then the tire warmers will come off. The bike stays switched off, keep it not cool, but not too hot and not using too much fuel. Run it up to where the mechanics have to say bye, and uh, yeah, just kind of make sure I'm in gear for a start. That's always a, that's always a bonus, make sure you're in gear. Um, and I always start the bike yeah, with about 20 seconds to go. So when two bikes are in front of me, when he sets off, that's when I start my bike, make sure everything's all right. And uh, there was no number nine in front of me this year. So that was interesting because Davo obviously injured himself at Alton Park early in the year. So, and nobody replaced him as number nine. So I had a 20 second gap from, from Davey setting off. I've not had that really before. It was, it was interesting. I'm used to that 10 second interval. 
I had a 20 second interval. So I think all the guys on the grid and the team are more nervous than I am. <laughs> but yeah, everyone's just saying, use your head, enjoy it. See you in 35 minutes, which is when the first pit stop will be. Big debate on whether number 10's help or hindrance. Even internally in the team, it's a big debate. Uh, I prefer it. I like to be a bit further back. Um, the team don't prefer it. <laughs> the sponsors don't prefer it. Um, I'm happy with it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm cool with number 10. I quite like it. It's got a one in it as well, isn't it? So it's all good. Feeling on the first lap, I think, I guess it's different for everyone. Um, I'm really kind of, as I am now, I'm, I'm so chilled out, honestly. You'd not, most people probably just wouldn't believe, even in my helmet, I'm just kind of like, oh, fifth gear, sixth gear, over there, over that jump, down here, there, that. <laughs> you just, I don't know, you get into this zone of riding a bike. Um, and bikers will understand what I mean by saying you get in the zone. Anyone who's ridden, will, whether you've been on a on just the road or a track day or a race or whatever, you'll you'll understand what I mean by getting in the zone. And I just instantly switch into that mode as soon as I've as soon as I've said bye to everyone. I'm on the bike and I'm rolling to the start line. That's that's the zone I'm in, and it doesn't feel fast. It doesn't feel frantic. I'm just I'm doing what I know I can do and, and where I want to do it and how I want to do it. The first laps have never been a good thing for me. They were this year. I don't really know why. Um, whether I was just in a better place mentally or physically or just more in tune with the bike than what I ever have been before, I don't really know. But uh, I was really strong on the first lap, which is unusual for me. You're in for a long race. And these races are endurance races as much as anything else. An hour and 45 minutes is what the race is going to take. You can't win it on lap one, but you can certainly lose it. Um, so I guess I just kind of make sure I'm slightly reserved, but not too reserved that we lose too much time to the guys in front. We actually had a bit of a problem with the bike in, the, in that senior race, so I had to manage the race quite a lot. Fortunately, I'd actually pulled a gap early doors um, in the race, so I can't remember what the gap was. About 12-ish seconds, I think. The end of lap one, or, uh, yeah, somewhere. I was near 10 seconds anyway at the end of lap one or before the end of lap one. So at that point, I was already starting to manage. Uh, I didn't know I had a problem at that point, but later on, um, first or second pit stop, I knew there was a, there was a slight issue that we had. Um, but the bike was running fine, so I just kind of kept with it and kept watching the pit boards. I had three pit boards all the way around, so from Balacrane, Sulby Bridge, and also up onto the mountain. Um, at the bungalow, so I was just kind of, not too many pit boards, but just enough. In fact, it wasn't at the bungalow, it was at the Craig for the senior. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of watching the board, just making sure I was as fast as I needed to be and keeping everyone else in check and making sure the bike wasn't uh, doing things it shouldn't be. Um, so I, don't, I never bother with the first sector time because I'm useless normally in the first sector, so um, at least on lap one anyway. Um, I'm sure it was definitely P1 anyway, and I'm sure it was plus two, I think. And, and at that point, I thought, ah, I'm already into a good position already. And I felt like I was not cruising. Cruising is the wrong word to use, but, but I was well within myself and just hitting my markers, hitting my brake points, hitting my gear points, my apexes, making sure the bike was going good, feeling right, moving around nice. I felt good. And, uh, yeah, to be in front when you're in that, nice comfy zone is yeah good good place to be lap two pretty much same as lap one um i wasn't uh we weren't as fast i don't think in the senior as what we were in the superbike race but that was really determined by what everyone else was doing uh, i've said this quite a lot a lot of people say oh you're going to break that record this year you're going to do this you're going to do that and i'm like well you win the race at the slowest possible pace. You don't need to win by two minutes. You don't need to win by 20 seconds. You can win by one second, the result's the same. Um, so you only go as fast as you need to. The senior race for me was a little bit slower. There was a lot of wind that day. You go back to that managing point of around the 10 seconds mark, 
is enough usually. Um, so I just kind of sat around there and watched my boards, pick my points, and try and enjoy myself. You know, even if you did have a moment, you kind of you put it already put it to the back of your brain by the time you've even sort you know once you've sorted it out, you've forgotten about it, and a lot of the time you don't even think about it again until much later or somebody else reminds you about it. Um, I really can't remember who I caught. Even in the whole race, I'm not entirely sure who I caught and passed. But um, again, I was just watching the pit boards, just making sure that everything was going to plan, really, which was obviously to try and win the senior TT. Passing at the TT is quite difficult, actually. Um, it really depends on where you catch the, the rider and also who the rider is because different riders obviously they ride in different ways where you catch them the bike the rider and then also where you are in your race and what's actually happening you know when if you've got a 10 or 15 second buffer you can take that little bit of time to go right caught you here maybe I'll just wait two or three corners and I'll pass you know I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead of myself all the time so th there was a point um, I'm sure it was in that race that I caught McGuinness, Hutchie, there was about four of them that I caught all in one go. They were all in a big long train. I can't remember what lap it was, but I remember catching all of them. And I actually sat behind John for, I had a bit of a gap and I sat behind John for a little bit. And it was nice. I enjoyed following him. I don't know, I actually followed him for a long time. Yeah, it's, um, it can be quite a difficult place to pass. Our pit stops were good. Um, team was, yeah, mint. Again, because we were in front, we had that gap. It meant that everything could be nice and chilled. You know, I don't ever rush into pit lane anyway. I've never been mega fast on pit stops, and it's not because the guys are slow. It's because I'm usually slow coming into pit lane or leaving pit lane, um, just because I'm chilled. <laughs> uh, I asked what was going on, who was behind. You know, cause I don't know who's behind. I just I, so I'm kind of going. Oh, is, is it Dean? Is it Michael? Is it Connor? Is it Davy? Like I've, uh, I normally kind of ask just just because I'm interested more than anything. So I run the three tear offs, and my plan is always to get to a pit stop without taking a tear off off, and then I get Daz to take my top tear off off, leave it at that, have a little quick drink. Is everything all right? Yep, everything's good. Boys, have a quick look round, clean the screen. Obviously filling up the fuel tank, new rear tire, I can feel when the bike goes down. Brownie always shouts, Luke, he's always shouting, yeah, going down. So then the fuel guy knows he can expect a little bit of surge in the fuel tank. And then I'm just waiting for the fuel, I watch him. Daz has got the fuel cap ready. As James pulls the, the pipe out, Daz has got that on. I'm already in gear, clutches in, hit the button. Off you go again, you know, and it's, it's all fluid, one fluid motion. Uh, memories from lap three. Um, this is where kind of issues started a little bit. Um, I knew I had a small problem, but nothing major. Uh, the bike was really hot really hot um, and I felt like it was going to start chucking some water out that's how hot it was so I was short shifting a bit I was knocking off the power when I needed to when I could do just to manage the gap I'd only go as fast as I needed to to keep that gap at around the 10 second mark and whenever I could I kind of chilled out short shifted a little bit just took some revs off the motor make sure we make it to the end that's the there's no point being fast all the way until a mile away this game is also about being clever with when you show your cards and how you show your cards and not letting on when there could be problems that yeah, other people thought we probably didn't have any problems all week and it was all plain sailing and it certainly wasn't, you know, it doesn't work like that. But whether you let your competitors know that or not is another, another question. It's all, all part of sport, isn't it? It's a mental game as much as it is anything else.
I let the team know that there was an issue on the on the second stop. Um, they could see it as well. I told them what what I thought, and they were like, "Yeah, you're right." And I was like, "Yeah, I thought it was." <laughs> um, so yeah, it was um, it was all cool though. I was yeah. I said, "Look, I, I'm managing what I've got now. I can go faster if I need to. I'm not worried." Um, everything else felt good. So you know, I don't know how fast them lap three or four was. I've got no idea, but. Again, I was just managing the gap to, to second place and enjoying ri riding around the best place in the world. Now, the last lap's the same as any other lap. It really depends on your race again. For this senior, as we said already, I, I, had, a, I had a good gap. I was in a good place. So um, I make it sound like it's really easy. It's, it's, it's really not. But it, we were in a good position, we were in a good place, and yeah, I was, I was waving to a few people around the crowd. You know, the crowd was really, I think we had a really, I don't know what the figures are, but um, the crowd this year for me was massive, and I think bigger than, than any year I've, since I've been coming in 14 was my first year. I think this year's TT, we had more people on the island than I've ever seen before. And if it's not that, then there was more people around the track actually watching because there were so many people, it was, it was mad, and it was really cool. And as a rider, I, wasn't, I won't be the only person getting this, but people waving the fists, waving their hands, waving their programs, really showing their appreciation to all the riders, it was epic. It was really cool, and I was, again, fortunate to be in a good position that I had a little bit of time where I could actually wave to a few people, put, give my thumbs up, I pulled a few little wheelies, nothing too much. You've got to be really careful doing, doing the showboating stuff because if you ran out of fuel half a mile from the end and didn't win, you'd look like a dick, wouldn't you? But, <laughs> or, if the, or if the bike failed or you made a mistake or whatever. But, but at the same time, I know how much people love it and, and I always like doing wheelies anyway. So um, a little bit of waving, a few small wheelies, nothing major, um, just to show a bit of appreciation back and... Uh, it's nice. I always, I don't know why, but the run from the 32nd and Windy Corner to the 33rd is always the place where I think I've got to wait 12 months to do this again. Yeah, crossing the lines, obviously knowing you've won the race is yeah, an unreal feeling and unless you've done it, it's, it's just not describable. You can't explain to people what that feeling is all about. It's just not possible. I did a pretty big burnout. I knew the motor was fairly hot. <laughs> she was fairly creamed already. Um, so I did quite a big burnout. I can't remember who I saw first. I think, I think the first person I actually remember seeing as I rolled round into the Park Ferme bit was Brownie with a, he got the rear stand in his hand, uh, ready to put the stand under. I'm sure it was him that I saw first. And there was Daz, there was Box, there was Faye, they were, they were all there. Yeah, Faye really had a, an awesome TT. You know, it was um, pretty, pretty epic to turn up and win all, all three races straight off the bat. There's not many teams that can say they've done that. Um, she was obviously really, really happy. Really happy. Yeah, we always like a good post-race celebration, FHO. It's, uh, we're, we're quite a big party team to be fair, which is all instigated by Faye and Daz, to be honest. Um, they, they both like to party, so yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know what time we got in, but yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was good fun. As it was, we won the race, we won comfortably enough. Um, I don't even know what the final winning margin was, but it was enough and uh, yeah, that's all we needed to do. Still win on the board for me in four in a week. There's only four of us, I think, now that have done that in, the, what, 115 years or something it's been going. So it's, uh, yeah, nice. Unbelievable is the only word that I can use, and it covers the whole of the TT <laughs> for every aspect because it literally is unbelievable. Like, what, if you go as a spectator, as somebody working in a team, as a rider, as an organiser, as a sponsor, it doesn't matter what part of TT you get to live or enjoy, it's just unbelievable.